everyone. It's so good to be here with you again. I hope all of you are having fun learning English in school. Uh, do people often come up to you to ask for directions to the school office or a classroom? Well, we are going to learn about this in just a moment. Before that, let's look at the goodies we have today here on my screen. First, we're going to talk about following and giving directions. Then, Mr. Hans will come on to teach you how to make a simple picture frame. Next, we're going to learn about words that tell us more about people, animals and things. For story time, there'll be another interesting story for you. And, as usual, we'll end our program with another catchy song. Uh, are you standing up? If you are, then you'd better sit down quickly, cause we're ready to start. Here they are again, the happy six, my old friends. How are you? We're fine, Max. Before we begin, let's warm up with some exercise. Do you know that exercising is very good for you? Yes! Now, I want everyone to follow me. Are you ready? Touch your feet. Good. Now raise your arms. Now jump up. Bend your knees. Lift your legs. Wow! How do you feel? I'm feeling... Oh, great knack. Anyway, I'm sure you're all feeling refreshed. Exercise is really, really good for you. Make sure you get enough exercise every day. You all did very well. I've just given you some simple instructions and you were able to listen and follow them. Izwan, do you know your school well? Yes, Nick. Can you tell me how I can get to the library? Go straight, turn left, and then turn right. The library is next to the resource center. Good. Now, Nuru, can you tell me where the school canteen is? From here, turn left. Go straight. Walk on until you find class 2A. The canteen is behind the class. Very good. Now, I'm sure all of you can give directions to places around your school. Uh, what are some of the words you use when you give directions? Go straight. Turn left. Turn right. Go up. Good. Those are some of the words you can use when giving directions. Friends, do you know that next week is Justin's birthday? Yes, and he's inviting all of us, including me, to his house. But first, he's going to give us directions to his house. So listen carefully. From the school, walk straight along Jalan Kancil. Turn left into Jalan Samara. Turn right into Jalan Ikan Emas. My house is on the left. It is next to the supermarket. Now, have you got that? No? Oh. Well, Justin is going to repeat the directions to his house again. So, listen again. 
from the school, walk straight along Jalan Kancil, turn left into Jalan Semara, turn right into Jalan Ikan Emas. My house is on the left. It is next to the supermarket. This is a job for Spellman! Hmm... Oh... Field! Field! Hmm? Turn right. Turn right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hi there, it's nice to be with you again. Today, we are going to make a photo frame. All we need is a piece of paper and a photograph. First, place the photograph in the center of the paper in this position. We'll start by folding both sides in to get fold marks. Now, open the folds and slide the photograph to a position whereby the width of the edge is equal to the width of the sides. Now next, we are going to fold both edges to make diagonal folds at both ends. This is how we do it. Next, we are going to make one more diagonal fold on both ends. So, having done that, Fold the top edge backwards and this becomes one side of the frame. Now for the other side, we are going to make two more diagonal folds on both ends. You can press the paper and make marks on both sides. So next, we are going to turn we are going to turn the paper on the other side and flip it over and make two more diagonal folds on both sides and we are going to fold in the diagonal marks 
the way we have done previously for the top part of the frame. So now, the next thing we are going to do is we are going to fold the edges over like this for both sides. Watch carefully and you can see that our frame is almost ready. So the last bit is to complete the frame by making the finishing folds. This is how we do it. On both sides, we fold in like this. And press it over. Having done that, we are going to readjust the photograph and slide them to the top. This is how we do it. So let us check on both sides. We are going to unfold and make a few reverse folds for both sides of the frame. This is how we do it. On this side, and press it nicely and neatly and now we have got the photograph in the frame. Our frame is almost ready and we can just put it nicely and see. This is how our paper frame looks like. So till then, bye! Today, our word family is on fruits. There are many types of fruit. Here are some of them. Apple Banana Mango Durian Watermelon Well, that's just six of them. Can you name other types of fruit? Happy trying! Today, we are going to learn about words that tell us more about people, animals and things. They are called adjectives. It's a describing word. Here are some adjectives. Big Tall Red Round 
beautiful. Here's how we use adjectives in sentences. Big. Big. That is a big house. Tall. Tall. Rumley is a tall boy. Red. Red. My shirt is red. Round. Round. The ball is round. Beautiful. Beautiful. It is a beautiful flower. Here are some other sentences that have adjectives in them. It is a small mouse. This is a square clock. It is a blue car. He is a strong man. Well, that's how we use words that tell us more about people, animals and things. Today is called The Vase. Just watch and listen to this very interesting story. Asmi and Prakash are at Choi Wan's house. They are doing their homework. Choi Wan's father and mother are not at home. After a few minutes, Asmi makes a paper aeroplane. He throws it at Prakash. The aeroplane hits Prakash on the ear. Ouch! That hurts! cries Prakash. Prakash <laughs> is annoyed. He gets up and starts to chase Asmi. They run around the living room and then up the stairs. Choi Wan looks on and shakes her head. Stop fooling around. You might break something, says Choi Wan. Crash! A vase goes tumbling down the stairs. Asmi and Prakash run after it. Oh no! cries Asmi. The handle is broken. The boys quickly look for the handle. They look under the stairs and then under the sofa. But it is not there. They look behind the cupboard. It is not there either. Prakash thinks quickly and says, Let's get some Play-Doh and make a handle. The boys do just that. When the handle is ready, they stick it onto the vase. Then they go back into the living room. They sit down quietly and finish their homework. That night, both the boys cannot sleep. They feel guilty about what they had done. They toss and turn on their beds. They are very unhappy. The next morning, both the boys go to Choi Wan's house. They tell Choi Wan about what they had done. Choi Wan starts to laugh loudly. You never really broke it. You see, the handle has been missing for a long time. You should have been honest. Then you wouldn't have had to put that funny looking handle on my mother's vase, says Choi Wan. The boys apologize again. They all have a good laugh. Then they go out into the garden to play.
Do you know what happens when we join words together? We will get new words. We call these words compound words. Let's see how this is done. Fire. Man. Fireman. Fireman. Key. Boss. Keyboard. Keyboard. Table. Cloth. Table cloth. Table cloth. It's time to go. I hope you'll join me again for another exciting episode of Next World next time. Bye-bye.